Our press statement for April 21st, 2016 reads as follows. SMG Lille and Company Limited and Guyana Beverages, Inc. versus Corp Republic of Guyana. SMG Lille and Company Limited and Guyana Beverages, Inc. are seeking special leave to appear as parties before the Caribbean Court of Justice for the purpose of filing an, an originating application claiming relief and reimbursement against the Cooperative Republic of Guyana for an alleged breach by Guyana of the principles of trade liberalization and free movement of goods envisioned by the revised Treaty of Chagoramas, establishing the Caribbean community, including the CARICOM single market and the economy. The applicants are claiming a refund of the environmental tax imposed on the companies during the period January 1st, 2006, to the date of the repeal of the Act in August 2015. They are relying on the judgment in the Rhodesia Beverages matter, in which a similar claim was made. However, noteworthy is the fact that in the Rhodesia matter, it was noted that the government of Guyana did not leave evidence to show that the tax was transferred. We intend to lead such evidence in this case. The government of Guyana has served a request to be heard. This matter is scheduled for case management on May the 13th, 2016 by the Caribbean Court of Justice. Local government election cases. On Wednesday, April 20, 2016, the Attorney General attended the court of the Chief Justice Acting, Madam Yonet Cummings Edwards, for the hearing of the applications by Zulfika Mustafa in the local government cases, as was adjourned by Justice Madam Diane Insanali on April 6, 2016. Upon arrival the Chief Just at the Chief Justice's chambers, the Attorney General was informed by the Chief Justice's clerk that the matters were resigned to Justice Insanali. The matters were called in the Chambers of Justice in Sonali, who stated that she resent the files to the Chief Justice. Justice in Sonali stated that the file was returned to the Chief Justice on the basis that the Chancellor of the Judiciary had instructed her to deal only with the orders in Isai and in, in the matters and return the same to the Chief Justice. Justice in Sonali stated unequivocally that she found it very unusual and suspicious that counsel for the applicant, Mr. Nandalal, approached the chancellor for his advice on how to proceed with the matter when the known procedures that the proactive writs are heard by the bail court judge in the absence of the chief justice. According to Justice Insanali, she felt forum shocked and that the matter was purposely placed before her the judge gave the Attorney General permission to make this known to the press. Justice Insanali granted the respondent seven days to file the affidavits and answer, and seven days thereafter to the applicants in response. And the case has been adjourned to May the 6th, 2016, at 9 a.m. West Coast Babies Land Matters. Why is the resolution of, of uh, prerogative rates against the Mahaika Maikoni Abari Agriculture Development Authority, MMA ADA, was pending on the question whether the MMA ADA could lawfully take away the Seafield Corps Land Society's lands? Former President Ramatar ignored the organizers, prohibited the MMA ADA from so doing, and granted leases to, to, uh, to a few new member non-members non-corp members the change in government brought in new management for the mma ada which recommended that the illegally that the illegality of taking away corp lands and giving it to others be corrected by the president who righted the wrong by canceling those leases amlcft amendment there in keeping with its commitments to fully comply with the FATF and CFATF recommendations, the Government of Ghana intends to table before the National Assembly an AML-CFT amendment bill to deal with the remaining outstanding recommenda recommendations. 
The Attorney General's Chambers held consultations on the draft bill in March and April 2016. Key stakeholders, including the opposition, received copies of the draft bill and other pertinent documents to enable them to fully be informed and give comments on the draft. Attendees included representatives of Kano, Saru, Public Private Sector Commission, Bank of Ghana, and the Ghana Bar Association. Ms. Anand Nandalal was invited, but refused to attend on both occasions. In the premises, the Attorney General's Chambers is satisfied that adequate consultations were conducted and the bill should pass through, and the bill could be passed through all three stages if necessary at the next sitting of Parliament. This ends our statement. Members of the media are invited to ask questions. Sir, you said that the bill could be passed through all the things that you have to say. Do you push it from the Senate? It depends. The situation is that the timeline for the submission of relevant um, material to the FATF was April the 7th. Of course, nothing could have been done because of the um, adjournment of Parliament to May the 4th. So we hope to be able to fast track it and, and get it up to the ARRG before the face-to-face -face meeting. That face-to-face -face meeting would be in on the 6th, you know, around the 6th of June. And that face-to-face -face meeting would be in the margins of the CFATF meeting. So it's important because there's only one recommendation remaining to be addressed by in relation to FATF. And we have addressed those recommendations. We have sent up the draft bill and um, also the action plan. But we, in fact, we need the act by the time the meetings are convened. I, I think it's a, it's a matter for um, good sense. I, I not, I'm not sure that um, we want the country to be in peril unnecessarily. And we trust that good judgment will prevail. We'll assess the situation when the time comes. The, the sitting would be on the 4th. The next sitting would be on the 13th. So it might not uh, make a big difference. Well, it, if they soon from the 1st of January 2006 to 2015, they're piggybacking in the same way like Odisha. And uh, the amounts obviously would be, if they were to be successful, it would be billions of dollars again. Well, they haven't quantified it as yet. But they've given you an indication. Billion? Well, I can't. That's what I'm saying. When, they, they, when you do the maths, they have only indicated a period for which they want the refund. And that's from 2006 up to the time that the bill was, the act was repealed. So you could see that's going to be um, a very large sum. A lot of persons, a lot of companies, in fact, had written me after the Redisha judgment in the same context, inquiring about uh, the government's position. Uh, SM Jalil has come out and they're. Um, they propose to take this matter to the CCJ, the original jurisdiction of the CCJ. And there are others. Are we confident? We're confident that the team of persons we have assembled to be able to testify before the CCJ on this question of whether the environmental tax was transferred to the consumers, we're very confident that we'll be able to achieve that. What consultations were held? The media, in fact, actually participated in the first consultation. I didn't know Sabbath News um, was here. And um, the second consultation was also held, but, but a, a week or two later, if I'm not mistaken. These things were publicized in the press, in the media. They, uh, Mr. Nana refused to attend both. But he has the, we sent him 
um, the draft bill, everything. He has everything. So I'm not sure what Madam Tashira is saying, that they don't know anything. He just, he didn't have the, um, he didn't give me the call to see if he wasn't attending. He just boycotted. Well, it's going to be, it's going to be coming up on the fourth for the first reading. And uh, maybe they change their mind by then we could have the um, poetry, but it doesn't matter one way or the other. There's a question for them. You're outside the statement already? Red House. Well, you know, Red House is a case we feel very strong. That matter is a matter we feel very strongly about. Um, there have been nine presidents of Guyana, and we feel that it's not really feasible, really, to have one one president, past president, um, to be used and up such a, to, to be alone situated in that red house, which is on prime land. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, it reeks of selfishness. Uh, we, we're hoping that they, the PPP would show some maturity in this matter because um, we believe all nine presidents should be situated in the same area. And same place. So where are we going? Well, it, it's still um, being um, considered, but you must remember that it's state land, and our state land repo repose are uh, repose in the president. But as I said, we hope that good sense prevails. Meetings were held, but they, this year? not not for the year, but meetings were held. Um, certain proposals were made, and as I said, these things are under consideration. But we we hoping that the PPP would, uh, you know, agree to situate all the presidents in the same same place. I just said to you that the president is, is the authority for all state lands. Well, um, plans are well entrained. That conference will be held in July. And the in attendees would be judges, members of bar, the Bar Association, judges in the region. And it really is um, co-hosted by the Hague Convention, which is based in, in the Hague itself, in New Orleans. And also, out of um, Argentina. Of course, it's substantially funded by UNICEF. And so we believe that um, we are, we're preparing and gearing up, and we believe that we'll have a successful conference. That, that conference will be declared open by um, the president of, president of Ghana, Brigadier David Granger. We, on, we are supposed to have working sessions. The venue would be the Pegasus Hotel. And there would be a culture night for the attendees. So we're hoping to get the um, Humana Yano by then. And um, we're receiving proposals from um, persons in relation to that culture night. Well, there are many objectives. It's a conference on international um, law, private international law, family law especially dealing you know, with cross-border countries and the family aspects include like adoption, abduction where people kidnap children and leave one jurisdiction and come home and so there are things about um, different aspects of um, family law, you know, maintenance and the like. You're supposed to have a judge that is appointed in this connection. And that judge is, is like a focal point in Ghana. 
that and that judge would relate to other focal point judges around the world. So if a problem arises, say in America, the guy the Guyanese focal point judge could contact the focal point judge in America and they would explain the situation over there in relation to the law effect or whatever issue it was. Um, of course we're not a signatory to the Hague Convention and we we believe that we should be a signatory, so we'll be engaging with foreign affairs on this issue also. But in the context of establishing our family court, this is going to be very vital. Well, that's the question now, since the independence of the judiciary um, has been ushered in. Of course, you recall that I piloted that bill. That question should be directed to the Chancellor of the Judiciary, but I can say that um, the main element has been um, addressed, that is the, the, the rules of the Family Court, and I had sent the, those rules over to the um, Chancellor a month or so ago. He has acknowledged that, and I think they are preparing to unveil the court as soon, as soon as possible. Well, of course, they wanted to be able to rent it if possible as an um, as an alternative. Rent it, they rent it, so as to house only the former president, Chedi Barajagan, in the library there. We're not inclined. So your position is um, still that the seven presidents should be represented by the Not online. All of them should be. Yes, the library should be for all the, uh, all the presidents. Mm -hmm.